on this first day of March. It is playoff basketball time for boys basketball on Rice Lake Community Media and the Rice Lake Area School District YouTube channel. I'm James Weingard, and we welcome you into Olson Gymnasium here in Rice Lake for this WIAA regional game between the Rice Lake Warriors and the Rhinelander Hodags. Great to have you with us here on a uh, Friday night. And uh, Daniel Broker is with us as usual. And uh, Daniel, welcome to the playoffs. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really good to be here. And one of the thoughts I had that I want to share on the air is a lot of times uh, this season when we've been uh, calling games, I've talked a lot about uh, the importance of winning a game for momentum going into the next game. But here in the playoffs, regardless of how heavily favored you are, against the other team, you're not guaranteed a second game. If the WIAA uh, Playoff Selection Commission wanted to guarantee you a game, they would have given you a bye. So if you're playing a game, there's no guarantee, there's no planning for, well, let's take it easy this game, so we play next game. It is, if the regular season is the marathon, this is the sprint here down the stretch going after a state uh, championship trophy. One and done the rest of the way now, right? Yeah. And uh, the winner of this game will face either the number one seed, Wausau East, or number eight seed, Merrill. And those, uh, and the winners will play tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock at the higher seed. So if uh, Rice Lake and uh, Merrill win, then the game will be here. But if Wausau East wins, then regardless who wins this game, uh, that game will be over in Wausau. And because of the pertinence uh, of that game to the location of the game and the opponent uh, tomorrow for Rice Lake, I will be tracking that a few times throughout this game. And to be honest, a lot of people uh, probably have Mayo uh, being down in the count. But you know, they've uh, they've faced some really good teams in their conference. Although uh, I don't believe Mayo won a game in conference, uh, I think they're still, they're still a solid enough team. If you look at what they did against Ashland, this is a team that we could see potentially pull off the first round upset against East. So I think it's important that uh, at home tonight, Wasa East plays vigilant if they'd like to be able to host uh, the winner of this game tomorrow. Meanwhile, in this game, uh, Rice Lake has lost two of their last three. They're coming in off of a loss to New Richmond by two points, 59 to 57. Uh, they beat Medford 56 to 51, lost to Hudson by six, and then beat Osceola by 10, and uh, Beaver River Falls by eight. Meanwhile, Rhinelander, of course, had to play that first game as a number five seed, and they played uh, Hayward earlier this week and won 65 to 40, so they beat Hayward pretty handily. And actually, they've won the la their last five, beat Medford 50 to 45, beat Mosini by one, beat Shano by 17, and they beat Lakeland by 10. And of course, uh, if you're not aware, uh, the Hodags come in at 10 and two in the Great Northern Conference. They tied for first, so they were co-champions with Mosini. They're 16 and nine overall. Meanwhile, Rice Lake, uh, difficult in the big rivers as it always is ended up just below 500 at six and eight and uh, they're 14 and 10 overall and that's uh, that's a very good uh, Mosini team uh, that they tied with so it does say uh, quite a bit about Rhinelander but at the same time looking over Rice Lake although as you mentioned they've lost uh, two of their last three games last 10 games in the regular season six and four and for for the I guess put it mildly clunky uh, second half of the season they had that's not too bad and the game I really want to look at is that uh, that final game. Of course, we called the Medford game, which got closer, I think, than a lot of people thought it should have. Uh, but looking at New Richmond, losing by two, that is a very uh, potent, a very capable New Richmond team. Uh, they are ranked in this uh, same part of the bracket uh, as Rice Lake. They are ranked number three. So to stay that close uh, is they lost by two here in Rice Lake but to lose uh, only by two against a very solid new Richmond team on the road, that's, uh, th that's it, it's not a win in Rice Lake's book, but it is, uh, it is a game that you can, you can take uh, away, you can, you can take away information from that uh, that can be beneficial to you here in the playoffs. One thing I will say before we get uh, too far into this national anthem here for you coming up in just a moment, we uh, have a great contingent of Hodags here. The, the uh, section where the band normally sits is clad in green right now, and 
the uh, Warriors uh, fans also uh, in attendance. The Hodags uh, have brought a, a, a throng of people here tonight. So this is going to be a difficult home game for the, for the Warriors. Certainly. Again, the Warriors six and eight in the Big Rivers Conference. That was sixth place. And the Hodags, uh, 10 and two in the Great Northern Conference. Uh, they are co-champions of that conference. 16 and nine overall. They uh, led Hayward 44 to 21 at half uh, earlier this week and ended up winning by 25, as you mentioned, 65 to 40. And right now, let's uh, pause here to honor America with the playing of tonight's national anthem. National anthem, of course, and uh, we get ready for basketball tonight, Daniel. And uh, I do want to elaborate a little bit on that point you made before the national anthem about uh, the amount of Rhinelander fans here. And I don't think it would be a stretch to see that, say that as of now, I think as the game starts to begin, there may be more West Lake fans that appear. The games have normally started at 7:15. It starts at 7 tonight. Uh, but it wouldn't be a stretch right now to say that there's more Rhinelander fans than Rice Lake, and that's. A, that, that's kind of a surprise for me, especially uh, for playoff basketball. Uh, but we'll just we'll just have to see uh, if this affects, if this gives kind of a road, a uh, road court advantage to the hold eggs, or whether I mean, when it comes to to adults, there's certainly uh, more rice like adults here. So we'll just have to see if those uh, those two those two parameters kind of cancel each other out. Starters for the Hodags just introduced. It's number one, Will Quinn. Seth Noffitz, number 10. Number 12, Truman Lamers. 24, Will Gretzinger. And 33, James Heck. And now the starters for the Rice Lake Warriors. Starting five for the Warriors, Connor Durand, Evan Strand, Zach Orr, JT Schradel, and Will Johnson. And uh, aside from those starting five out there, everyone else on the Rice Lake Warriors averages uh, less than four points a game with the 19 of Zach Orr, 13 and a half of JT Schradel, 7.4 of Evan Strand, 6.8 of Will Johnson, and 5.4 of Connor Durand. Derek Lemons is the head coach for the Hodags. Kevin Orr, the head coach for the Warriors. And we are ready for playoff basketball tonight 
on Rice Lake Community Media. Thanks for being with us. Opening tip is won by Rice Lake, and it's Zach Orr with it. And as I said uh, about the Rice Lake uh, student section probably filling up, it has, has filled up quite a bit since uh, when we began this game. Strand inside for Schradel, outside. Duran takes a three off the iron, no good. Rebound comes down to Devin Feck, who had 16 against Hayward the other night. And again, although Rice Lake didn't score on that uh, possession down the court, uh, there was a lot of positives, that penetration, kicking it back out, taking a good three. Speaking of a three, around the world, three, four times, and finally it drops. Will Gretzinger, who has a 16 and a half point per game average, gets the first basket of the night. Three points for Rhinelander, and they lead by that. Durand with it, and now Orr out at the top. Orr kicks it out here to the near side for Strand. Jumper way too strong. Durand with the weak side put back. Three to two. And that is something Rice Lake did a little bit better down the last few games of the season, but they really struggled with uh, was those rebounds. It was getting defensive rebounds, but it was also getting offensive rebounds. So that's one of the keys for Rice Lake. Also playing in transition uh, and putting up over 30 points in the first for a team that's really struggled to put up first half points and being good, uh, doing a good job on that help defense. Statistically, these two teams are very evenly matched. Ryan Lander scores 60 years of pullback. Two, uh, two, it was partially blocked. Ryan Lander able to save it. And it's gonna be over to Lamers. Nice pass back across, way too strong on the layup, on the no footer. And a wide open look at a three. And down it goes for Truman Lamers. Averages 10 points per game. And it's six to two, Ryan Lander. And uh, Rice like missed a few uh, defensive rebounds there, but other than that, I mean, there was there was uh, quite a few positives. Uh, also, at the same time, trying to uh, regroup really quickly when they were beat uh, on defense. And uh, I mean, the end result and some of the minor parts of it weren't great, but the end. But there are takeaways from it that were actually pretty positive. Strand for three is no good. Seth Noffitz with the rebound for the Hodags, and this will come out to Will Quinn. Noffitz, free throw line, bounce pass down to the block. And that goes to James Heck. Heck backing in against Will Johnson, no good. Johnson has the board and he gives it to Schrader with a two and a half minutes gone here in the first half. And one of the fields that Rice Lake uh, frequently struggles on is height. Uh, but again, I mean, the other advantage of basketball is to play physical. You don't need to worry a whole lot about height or at least as much about it as normal. Nice looking turnaround, quick release jumper from the free throw line, nearly a steal in the backcourt, and it's out of bounds. It belongs to Rice Lake on the baseline. Six to four, Hodag's lead with 15.08 to go in the opening half. And on the point of Rice Lake playing in transition, it wasn't exact per, per se uh, exactly playing in transition, but they were playing that aggressive defense to put them back in transition instead of having to play defense then set up at uh, on a half court set next time. Or wide open look from the corner, that's no good. Rebound loose and collected by Rice Lake. Strand is blocked, but a foul called. And Evan Strand heads to the free throw line. First foul of the game goes against number 12, Truman Lamers, his first first per, uh, team foul. And Evan Strand on the free throw line, a 61% free throw shooter. As a team, Rice Lake shoots 61.4%, so he's right on the season average for the team. Strand misses that first one. Averages seven points per game. And at least to start so far, I mean, Rice Lake's defense, uh, it's been very good throughout the season. Uh, tonight, it is, is practically perfect uh, as they've been kind of contesting these and rebounds just like that. Two opportunities off the missed free throw. Both of them go awry for the Warriors. And now the Hodags come back and uh, look to build on their six to four lead with 14.44 to play here in the opening half. Lamers to this side, this is Gretzinger, and Gretzinger lost it off of his foot. It goes out of bounds, ball belongs to Rice Lake once again. I mean, aside from missing a few rebounds uh, on Rice Lake, their main problem to this point has been missing shots. And I mean, in the postseason, you can't be as certain of it getting better as in the regular season, uh, but that is uh, an issue that does tend to improve just with getting more shots and getting good shots up. Or outside, they'll go all the way around to the baseline. Duran, nice pass inside, JT Schradel no good. Rebound, tipped around three times, and finally it's pulled down by Lamers for Rhinelander. 
And Truman, uh, Truman Lamer is averaging about uh, four rebounds per game, which is Rice Lake's uh, second highest rebounding total. Zip pass out, Quinn, they work the perimeter, it goes to Gretzinger. Team's leading score at 16 and a half per game. Free throw line in the lane, off balance, jumper good, foul called, basket counts. Oh, straight up. Gretzinger to the free throw line to try and convert a three point play. Rice Lake foul on Zach Orr, his first and the team's first. Devin Feck in for the Hodags. He had uh, 16 against Hayward the other night. And Gretzinger who makes about seven out of eight free throws uh, on the season, 80, almost 85%. Misses that one, the announcer Jinx has uh, struck yet again. And the rebound to Zach Orr. 8-4, Rhinelander, 13.42 to go, opening half. And certainly, uh, Gretzinger is a real weapon for Rhinelander, maybe not to the uh, to the point that Zach Orr is for the Warriors, but he's someone who likes to be cognizant of. Orr missed. Truman Lamer is on his horse, heading back to the other end. JT Schradel. Picks up the foul, his first, second team foul. And Lamers to the free throw line for two. Rhinelander is 63.7% free throw shooting team on the season. The first one is going to be short, well short as a matter of fact. So the count stays eight to four as Colton Eggleston checks in for the first time and JT Schradel will have a seat. And I think, uh, I mean, Rice Lake only has two fouls in the first uh, five or so, four and a half minutes. But we've seen uh, those two fouls have been kind of sloppy fouls out of Rice Lake, which is really tough in the postseason. Lamers goes one for two from the line. They extend their lead out to five. It's nine to four with just under 13 and a half to play in the first. Or to the rack. Boy, he got hacked all the way down. No call. Loose ball collected over here on the near sideline by Evan Strand. And now Will Johnson with it out at the top of the arc. And it's a uh, situation like that. That's where the uh, the road court advantage really hurts you if you're the home team. Duran with the save. Nice job by Orr to finally collect it. He'll take a pullback three off the iron. No good. Rebound slapped out of there. And oh, boy. That's foul. And it's going to oh, be a no. foul on come Will on. Johnson. Oh, come on. So 34, Will Johnson picks up the foul, his first third team foul. Rice Lake fans disagree and the Hodag fans think that's the greatest call in the uh, history of basketball. Evan Schoder checks in for the uh, for the Hodags. 12.58, time remaining here, first half. Nine to four, Warriors down by a nickel. Feck with it. Free throw line, tips his way down the lane, and that shot is blocked by Evan Strand, and it goes out of bounds. Ball stays with Rhinelander. Gretzinger to inbound. I mean, it, it looks like a really good play, especially capped off with that block, but you do have to understand that Rice Lake's defense up top kind of broke down, allowing him a fairly open shot until Strand came in there and blocked it. Gretzinger takes the three off the inbound, and the shot no good. Connor Durand had the board. Zach Orr kicks it out to Will Johnson. He'll try another three, and that one's off, off the rim as well. Lamers has the rebound for Rhinelander. 12 and a half to play, first half. It's nine to four. Hodags in front. Gretzinger with it. He battles with Zach Orr, uses a pick. Three is way short. Strand has the board. Orr runs the floor. Or near side wing, he'll take a spot three. Splash! Or for three, he's got five of the seven Rice Lake points tonight. It's nine to seven now with 12 minutes to go. And again, like I said, I mean, you run, they're running the offense right. Maybe you'd like a little more transition, but they're doing things correctly. Eventually those shots are gonna fall. Lamers near side wing. Out to the top, Gretzinger now down to the corner for Quinn. Quinn escapes out near half court. Feck, and that pass finds its way through traffic over to the corner. And Gretzinger stares at Connor Duran, now his defender. They'll lob it back over this way, nobody there, but Gretzinger able to go and chase it down in front of Coach Orr. Gretzinger, free throw line, out to this near side. 
Here's a spin, and that's going to be an errant pass, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Gretzinger. And subs all over the place. Rhinelander fans not terribly happy with that call. They thought maybe Coach Orr was in the way. James Heck returns to the Rhinelander lineup, among others. Pierce Hostrider in for the first time for the Warriors as well. Eggleston, Hostrider, inside pass, Schradel, and that's no good. On the rebound, it's loose. Evan Strand all by himself for three, in and out, no good. Rebound loose again, Schradel comes away with it. And now Orr. Back out to Schradel, wide open look at a three, got it! He shoots about 50, over 50% uh, from the three point range. But I'd also like to point out, all season watching this team, I didn't think I'd be saying this, but Rice Lake is absolutely killing Ryan Lander on the boards, and that's a lot of steps. And that is steps, traveling against Lahodag. Rice Lake has their first lead of the night, it's 10 to nine with 10.32 to go. Now the fan battle is here because on one side you've got the sea of white for the uh, for the uh, Warriors and on the other side you've got a half sea of green. Hostrider inside pass by himself. Strand, oh. they'll wave that off and we've got an offensive foul called on oh. Zach Orr. I hate to say it, but that was, that was on Orr, but before that, Orr was absolutely getting grabbed down in the post and uh, I mean, I, I, I guess you have to be cognizant of how much contact they're going to allow tonight. That goes out of bounds. Errant pass there by the Hodags. Boy, oh boy, it's been a long time since we've had this much energy in this, in this room, and now we've got a timeout on the floor, 10-11 to play here in the first half. It's Rice Lake 10 and uh, the Hodags 9, and this one is turning into a... a Admittedly a little bit sloppy, but the energy in here is second to none. You know this is playoff basketball. And yeah, uh, of course you can expect uh, at the beginning, uh, I mean, we're within what would technically be the first quarter, uh, if it wasn't close, but you're in the first quarter of playoff basketball. It takes a little bit of time to kind of readjust uh, to, uh, to the style of it. So, I mean, it's not too surprising. That's a little sloppy playing, playing uh, up-tempo. And uh, the defense is, of course, being staunch. I'm more worried about getting burnt on defense than they are about, uh, about uh, getting a bunch on offense. Uh, but, I mean, there's been positives. Uh, Rice Lake running their system really well. Uh, I'd, like to see, uh, I'd like to see certainly Rice Lake uh, try and penetrate a little bit more. They've, they've gotten it inside. Uh, there's been a few plays where they've gotten past this Ryan Lander defense. Uh, so it does show that there are some lapses uh, in this uh, defense that Ryan Lander's playing. Evan Strand has it for the Warriors here on this near side. Moves between the circles. Find Schradel on the far sideline right in front of the Rhinelander students. Zach Orr down to the corner for Strand as we tick under 10 minutes left here in the first half. Strand, Schradel has it on the wing. Schradel to the, uh, to the lane, got stripped on his way up. Boy, good defense there by the, Ho by the Hodags. Depending on uh, which side you are, it's either good <laughs> defense or lucky defense. Uh, lucky in some people's view is that they might think that that should have been called uh, otherwise, but Ryan Lander has it now. Bounce oh, pass yeah. in, got well behind the defense, and they overlaid it on the no-footer. Oh, boy. I mean, that's, again, We've that's... We've seen uh, that so many times by Rice Lake this season. Here's three for Orr, no good. Again, and the rebound loose, collected by Schradel. Go ahead. That's uh, that's that uh, missed shot. That's luck for Rice Lake. Uh, luck only goes so far in the playoffs. It's it has to be executing well. Uh, I mean, you can take uh, that happening one or two times, as long as it's not late and as long as uh, as long as you can get a little bit of a cushion behind that. And there's one to answer. Schradel misses a no footer. They go wrestling to the floor. We've got a jump ball called possession arrow belongs to Rhinelander. So. We'll head the other way as we've got subs coming in. Sam Chevney, Will Johnson, Connor Durand all checking in for the Warriors. And that's, uh, that's kind of concerning uh, if you're Rice Lake. Uh, 
not not so much the fact that JT Schrader is missing those close shots, is the fact that JT Schrader is doing what he did very well throughout the season. He's beating these defenses uh, in the post, making that move, but he's there's enough contact from Ryan Lander's getting stopped. From the corner off the glass, he glanced in. Seth Noffitz for three, and the Hodags have the lead back. Now it's 12 to 10. Eight and a half to go in the first. And Noffitz shooting about 41% from three, so I mean, not, not particularly someone you want to leave open for a situation like that. Outside, Strand for three to answer, and he does. 13-12. Yeah, good luck uh, before that three, though. It was a little concerning. Rice like looking to try and play to get that foul. I think they need to play to get the shots right now, and that's, uh, that's what we're going to see all night. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it the other way. Devin Feck and Evan Strand collided over on the far sideline. One thing that we've noticed a lot so far in tonight's game, the referees are letting him play. I mean, you, we've seen Rice Lake get mugged a few times going down the lane, going down for a shot. That time we see a big collision on the sideline, no whistle. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a few calls really that I wasn't I wasn't quite sure about it, uh, the consistency, but the, it, there has been consistency uh, since then. Uh, I, I believe, I mean, as a player, you gotta kind of settle into your style. I think it's uh, similar as a referee, and they've uh, they've kind of figured out what they're going to see a lot of, and uh, what's what's going to get called, and uh, they've been letting these guys play tonight. Tradel again, blocking foul. There we go, and it's going to get send Tradel to the free throw line to try and convert a three point play. Foul against number two, Devin Feck, his first, and the second team foul, and JT Tradel's going to head to the line. We've got a full timeout on the floor. Rice Lake, 17, Rhinelander, 12, 7.38 to play, and you're watching the WIAA Regional Basketball on Rice Lake Community Media. Yeah, and I mean, you know it's uh, it's a playoff spirit basketball here in Rice Lake when the co-analysis starts yelling into the mic on one of those plays, but I mean, that was, that was a good play. It was, you knew they can't go without calling that, and you know it's gonna be called on someone, so the question was who, and, uh, Luckily for Rice Lake, uh, the defender, uh, Devin the defender, Feck. Uh, sorry, Devin Feck, uh, unable to get set up uh, just, just by a little bit, and uh, Rice Lake now going to have the and one from JT Schradel. While we have a second here, we want to wish all the very best to uh, Avery Ash, Mackenzie uh, Dalsbo, who are uh, participating in the indi individual gymnastics meet in uh, Wisconsin Rapids uh, at the Lincoln uh, Fieldhouse uh, tomorrow. Also robotics uh, at state, uh, they uh, participated today. And we also want to uh, pass along hi and hello to uh, Gary and Mary uh, Bushong and Ned Matthews, who are big Rhinelander fans, who are uh, probably watching us tonight, so hi to them. And uh, Jim and Ann Koblish, Coach K's uh, parents out in Arizona. And uh, I just wanted to do this quick uh, update. Merrill actually has the lead, as I said. It's going to be a fun game, but 14-13 with about seven minutes in the first uh, in Wasa East right now uh, with Merrill actually leading. Schradel completes the three-point play. Rice Lake has a wide, as wide of a lead as they've had so far tonight. It's at six at 18 to 12, 7.30 to go. And uh, I've been very happy. I mean, Rice Lake's played good defense all season. Uh, tonight they've played what I was very uh, I was very impressed by when I watched Memorial and uh, Northwestern run this. It's it's aggressive defense. They're jumping those passes. And there's James Heck right on cue, sneaking in behind the defense. 18-14 now. And I mean, it's not that playing aggressive defense yields that uh, as uh, as kind of a side effect when it's not properly executed. That is the dark side of it. Uh, if you miss the jump pass, uh, stuff such as that can uh, can occur fairly commonly. Connor Durand, hard to the basket, no good. Rebound tapped out of there, and it's gonna be Durand again along the baseline. He'll go across to this side for Will Johnson, now Jevney with it. And Schradel, 6.40 to play in the half. Rice Lake lead down to four. Schradel wide open, left side, short. Rebound right to Evan Strand. Schradel, he'll try again, and that's still no good, and the rebound goes out of bounds. It belongs Ooh. to Rhinelander. Do you see that wrestling match going on? Uh, yeah, I did see that. That's, uh, that's kind of what I had. Uh, I had some of that uh, instinctive stuff. As a, as a player, I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, I mean, when your team does it, uh, you, you kind of smirk and, and you think it's funny when uh, they kind of hold the other guys from getting the ball. But I mean, 
when it's when the other team's kind of boxing you out, it's, uh, it loses a little bit of its uh, luster in amusing, but uh, that's that does lead to uh, to the rest like a turnover. Moffitt's top of the arc. James Heck with it now is he's being bothered by Will Johnson. Lammers. Quinn had it for a moment inside, trying to get around Strand. And that's a good looking shot there from Lamers. He's got six tonight and the lead down to two for Rice Lake at 18 to 16. And it's playoff basketball. Uh, I don't think anyone expected really a blowout here. So, I mean, they're, get, they're getting what they paid for. I mean, even us, uh, even us students having to pay tonight, but we're seeing an excellent show so far. So, I mean, it's, it's completely worth it. Zach Orr left that one a little short as Will Quinn has it for Rhinelander in the front court. Five and a half to play in the first. And uh, so far, although uh, Will Quinn only averaging 2.4 points a game, he's been very active with his offense. From the sideline, a three, no good. Offensive rebound from Gretzinger as he gets wrestled to the floor. Now the ball loose, JT Schradle, one on three. Schradle to the rack, up off the glass, foul called. Basket counts and he'll head to the line again. And uh, we've seen both teams uh, on defense allowing some long rebounds. Uh, but as I pointed out a little bit earlier about uh, beating uh, Rice Lake, needing to play in transition because that's where they're good at. Uh, I mean, they've won games playing in half court, but they're the best when they're playing in transition. That's exactly what we saw from JT Schrader on, uh, on that uh, all by very short possession. Foul against Lamers, his second, third team foul. Schradel on the line to try and convert a three-point play and get the Rice Lake lead back to five, and he does. He's two for two from the line tonight. And before we go any further, we've got subs coming in. Hostrider and Eggleston will spell Schradel and Strand for the Warriors. And you can uh, kind of tell, uh, of course, being that you're not really playing for the next game, Orch is trying to, uh, when he has a lead, uh, kind of a, a moderate lead like this, trying to keep uh, some of his, uh, his higher scores well rested uh, when he put uh, Zach on the bench, he put J.D. Schrader on the bench. You don't see a whole lot of that in the regular season. That ball gets knocked out of bounds by Orr here on the near sideline. Schrader, by the way, has 11 points already tonight. And uh, his, uh, his high, uh, high score for this year was uh, 28 points. I believe we might have uh, actually called that game. So we'll have to see uh, how close he gets to that. Moffitt's. Out to Caden Seeker, who's in for the first time. Bounce pass, trying to get, get that backdoor pass again. And then we get a tackling foul, essentially, in the way backcourt. And that's going to go against Seeker. That'll be his first in the fourth team foul against Rhinelander. Well, I mean, uh, Will Johnson was on that state winning football team, so I guess if Rhinelander <laughs> wants to come in here and play football, uh, we, might, we might be able to win that, too. Will Swenson and uh, Evan Strand check back in. So right now for Rice Lake, we've got Strand, Orr, Hostrider, Eggleston, and Swenson on the floor as we come up on four and a half minutes left here in the first half. Warriors lead 21 to 16. Hostrider left wing. Now Strand to this side. Orr has got it. Moves to the lane. Looking for a place to go with it. Lobs it back outside for Strand. And Hostrider. Pierce to Zach Orr. Now Strand with it. And Orr again. Put the ball on the floor, had it knocked out of his hands temporarily. Eggleston's got it. I was gonna say, I thought that was a zone defense, but then as everybody shifted, Rhinelander kind of shifted with them. Orr down to the block. Or kind of in the land of trees down there, puts a shot up, no good. Hostrider got the inside position, got the rebound, bobbled it off of his foot. Now we've got a timeout called by Coach Orr, and it's going to be out of bounds on the baseline with 3.43 to go in the first half, and Rice Lake leading 21 to 16. And uh, I mean, with Rice Lake uh, for a little bit there, their offense uh, on that possession had gone a little stagnant. Uh, they were just, they were doing a lot of passing around and waiting. Uh, waiting a long time before that cut occurring. However, a uh, nice job of Pierce Hostrader getting that uh, rebound. And what we've seen so far from Rice Lake, uh, 
it just looks like they want the ball more uh, so far. After after it's going up, uh, they've been they've been crashing the boards. They've been uh, they've been going after it aggressively, and uh, I mean, it, it's given it's given them the lead so far. Both teams with three three pointers each. Rice Lake, had, well, let me correct that. Rice Lake has three threes from beyond the arc, and then they've got two more with the hoop and the harm. So they've, in essence, really have five if you count the old-fashioned ways. Stradle has uh, put two of those down. And then on the Rhinelander side, Knopfitz, Lamers, Gretzinger, all with a three-pointer. And uh, Stradle, Stradle has 11, I believe, and uh, I mean, I mean that makes that makes sense. It's uh, it's the playoffs. Uh, JT's at home. He knows that uh, if he doesn't play well, this could be his last game. Uh, so of course there's some extra motivation there. Orr gets the inbounds, delays the shot, finally takes the shot, makes it. He's got seven, and that's what the lead is. It's 23 to 16. Will Quinn in the backcourt finds Gretzinger. Gretzinger to Quinn. All by his lonesome Devin Feck for three, and he buries that one. Four three-pointer for the Hodags. And they cut the lead down to four. It's 23 to 19. And I guess I'm a little surprised uh, with uh, Gretzinger, who's averaging 16 and a half points per game, only having five in the first half so far. Uh, as you normally tend to see a little bit higher point scores come playoffs. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh -oh. That was beautiful by Rice Lake. A beautiful back cut by JT Schrader and Rhinelander didn't know what hit them. Backcourt trap trying to get out of it. Gretzinger, oh! And there was no call there either. It was either a carry or a travel or something, but the, and Coach Orr is beside himself. Wow. Well, sometimes you get them, sometimes you miss them. They're all human. Gretzinger in the lane, outside, and now Feck with it, top of the arc. Inside pass, turnaround jumper, short. And Schradel has the board. Two and a half to go. And that's the best thing you can do if you don't get a call is uh, is going and getting the ball back or going and scoring uh, that possession. Uh, so a great job by the Rice Lake uh, defense not being intimidated by the stuff they can't control. Or into the lane. Hostrider outside for Strand to Orr in the corner. 2-10 to play in the half. Now Schradel and Swenson. Back to Orr. Strand was standing right behind him. I just want to point out, by the way, uh, Zach Orr leads the team in assists per game with uh, 3.2 for the Warriors. We're under two minutes to play here in the opening half. Hostrider has it. Now Orr. Warriors being patient, we'll call it. And well, I mean, that's well, a great thing about not having the shot clock, uh, such as it is, I believe, in Minnesota. And uh, it, it, it's kind of poetry in motion uh, for Rice Lake as they're really getting a chance to move around. Oh! So. Orr missed. Hostrider has the rebound. And a jump ball on the rebound. Possession arrow belongs to Rice Lake, so we'll keep it on this end. Will Johnson checks in for Swenson. Connor Durand in. Pierce Hostrider, who got some decent minutes in there, got some important rebounds. He'll check out. Minute and 33 to play here in the half. Now lob it in. Schradel has it above the arc. Zip pass over here to this side, and. Or wasn't expecting the pass. Hit him right between the one and the zero. Bounced off his chest and ended up going out of bounds. And I mean, I guess, uh, I, I mean, it hurts, of course, considering you're in the playoffs. Uh, but I mean, it's better to have it with 127 in the first and 127 second. Duran pleading his case that he thought the uh, Rhinelander player was last to touch the ball before it went out of bounds. Fell on deaf ears as uh, Feck has it, and a lob pass all the way across the floor to the other side as Rhinelander tries to break the backcourt press. They finally do, and now it'll come over here to the corner on this side. Feck's got it on the wing, moves to the lane, hits a body, foul called, and Devin Feck will head to the free throw line as he grimaces, and the foul will go against 24 JT Schradel. I beg your pardon, it's gonna be Evan Strand. That's his first and the fifth team foul. Devin Feck on the line, 76.5% free throw shooter. Knocks the first one through. That gives him four points tonight. Again, against Hayward in that uh, quarterfinal game in the regionals, he had 16 on Tuesday night. Five point Rice Lake lead at 25 to 20. Second free throw is good. 
Averages just under 10 points per game. And we are just over a minute to go in this opening half. Or to Schradel. Now Will Johnson. Strand, zip pass down low. Schradel, turnaround jumper, short. Rebound to Evan Schroeder. I think part of that, uh, the allure of uh, fading away there is uh, looking for that foul call, but so far uh, it hasn't gotten called a whole lot tonight. So I think if you're Ice Lake, uh, you kind of have to change the game plan there a little bit. Down to 31, 30, and 29 seconds to play. Rhinelander perhaps content to play for the last shot here. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Bad pass almost intercepted. 15 seconds left. Gretzinger trying to get around Duran. Duran cut, cut him off, and then Connor gets called for a foul. That's his first. Two, four, six, that's a 16 foul. So with 10 seconds left, Rice Lake has no more fouls to give here in the first half. 10 and a half seconds to go off the inbounds. They'll move down to the corner. Three is good. Devin Feck for his second three-pointer. Or coast to coast off the glass, it's no good. And we have reached the end of the first half. Our score, the Rice Lake Warriors 25 and the Rhinelander Hodags 24. I mean, yeah, uh, it's a playoff basketball first half. It's a high school playoff basketball first half. Uh, that was that was apparent as we watched the beginning of this. Uh, but I mean, Rice Lake didn't have a terrific half. They didn't have a terrible half. So I mean, uh, they're up by one and a half. So we'll really, uh, I mean, anybody can get a few points or can get shut down in the first half uh, of a game here in the playoffs. But what's really going to matter? Uh, I think uh, of a lot of rodeo, it's kind of like those uh, those late rounds. That's what's really going to matter for these two teams. Uh, they've they've done the one thing you need to do in the first half, which is, is keep it competitive, keep it close. But the second half, that is where we really, really start to see that the playoff basketball attributes kind of come into play. It it becomes a little bit more final when you get into that last 18 minutes because you know if. If your number isn't bigger than their number, sayonara, you're, you're done for the season. And uh, uh, certainly, and uh, both teams, of course, uh, have seniors, so uh, both of these uh, sides have, have really something to play for, uh, if it's not for themselves, and making sure that uh, they can keep playing. Uh, it's for, for your teammates, uh, who this could very well be the last game if you don't come out on top, if you don't win this game. So yeah, I mean, a lot of motivation. Uh, it's not... It's not just about playing for that state trophy. It's about understanding that some of these people might never get to put on your team's jersey again if uh, if you don't play well in the second half. Talking about seniors, Rice Lake has two. Colton Eggleston and uh, JT Schradel are both seniors. Rhinelander on their uh, roster, they've got five seniors listed. And so one way or the other, somebody is going to be done after we're, uh, after we're through tonight. And again, the winner of this game will play either number one seed Wausau East or number eight seed Merrill. Uh, that game also going on right now, and, and uh, Daniel will have an update on that game for us here in just a minute. The uh, winners of this game and that Wausau East and Merrill game will play tomorrow night, uh, March 2nd at 7 o'clock at the higher seed. So if Wausau East wins, regardless of who wins this game, it'll be there. If Merrill wins, then if Rice, uh, I guess whoever wins this game, well, Merrill will go to them. And so that's kind of the way that plays out. And I mean, Huron Zaleski Sports, I mean, of course, come to playoffs, so you're going to try and uh, hype up a lot of these matchups. I do truly stand behind if a team slacks uh, that they will likely go home. But I mean, it's a respectable Wasa East team. They're at halftime right now, and Merrill is currently winning by four. So. I mean, we're looking at uh, this whole chunk uh, of the bracket right now, and any one of these, all of these four teams are completely in play right now. Rice like Rhinelander, Merrill, and uh, Wassa East, they have, they have uh, a terrific chance to move on to the next round. They have a extremely scary chance of having to go home after this game. 
I don't. I couldn't have asked for anything else. I saw some of the scores. I uh, in the uh, the first round, of course, the one where I believe uh, it's like a 15 point. Uh, it was a 12 point win for Mel over Ashland. Uh, 25. Sorry, 25 for Rhinelander over Hayward, and I was a little bit nervous that we might see something like that uh, here. And uh, so far, we we haven't seen that. We haven't seen a game that gives us really any hint that this is going to end up being a, a 20, 30 point victory for either one of these sides. Instead, it seems like uh, a game that is an excellent, uh, an excellent precursor to March Madness. And we know Rice Lake struggled a bit in the second half of the season. Well, hopefully, uh, if they can close this game out, that w might be a, a reflection, uh, kind of an idea for Wisconsin to take after uh, in March Madness. But uh, again, as of now, uh, it's uh, all the pressure is on Rice Lake uh, here at home. They did, uh, they did some good things. Uh, their defense was stellar in the first half. They gave up 24 points. They normally don't give up 24 points at home in the first half. Still, I mean, they, they did enough things right. This is playoff basketball. You know the other team is going to step it up. Uh, normally more on defense than on offense. But again, giving up 24 points with the way that Rice Lake's defense uh, was playing, the aggressiveness, uh, the fact that there were several inbound passes from Ryan Lander that, uh, that never got across half court, that, that never even touched their hands inbounds. That, that's got to be a positive, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, Kevin Orr is going to touch a lot on, on some of the things that Rice Lake needs to improve on in the locker room. Uh, but certainly the defense so far has been a positive. Uh, the offense, maybe a little more transition. This is a Rhinelander team that has really struggled to catch up with uh, with Rice Lake. On transition, uh, they haven't allowed Rice Lake to drive from the half court set, though. And that's kind of important. Uh, Rice Lake does have the, the chance, though, to tr kind of try and hit those... Uh, mid-range a little bit, but, but certainly three-pointers, they've been left uh, left open for, for a lot of this game. Not to be devil's advocate, but I'm going to be anyway. You talked about how Rice Lake scores in the first half. Well, in that last game that we did against Medford, they only scored 18. They gave up 30. Of course, the, the script was flipped in the uh, second half. They scored 38 and only gave up 21. And uh, I made this point a few times uh, as they played Medford. Medford was a game that, uh, that kind of set up this matchup. Uh, Medford uh, and Rhinelander, I be believe, uh, they're in, in the same division. Well, I mean, well they're yes, in the same, yes, they're in the same division. Too. Same conference, yes, that's uh, that's what I was I was kind of scraping around for. The, the two teams, uh, Rhinelander was in a tie for first, uh, Medford was in third, uh, Rhinelander being 10-2 and two in conference, Medford 9-3. and three. Uh, The record's a little bit different. But when you look at Rhinelander, the f five seed, Medford, the six seed, these two teams in the same conference, they're very they're very similar. Uh, so I do think it is beneficial for Rice Lake to have played that game against Medford. And, you know, to be honest, uh, I think it, I think it's good that they were down by a dozen at halftime because it kind of gave them a feel. It, it gave them that playoff basketball feel. They came back and they won. And so if we were down even 10 right now at halftime, it would still give Rice Lake kind of that, uh, that momentum and that uh, ability of knowing that they can do it. Uh, so especially up by one, and knowing this team similar to a team that you rallied as much as they did against Medford, Rice and, Lake's in a good situation. And not to be too wild about it, but that being down by a dozen against a team like Medford, knowing that you're probably going to face off against a team from that same conference in the playoffs, kind of gave them a, well, well, we'll call it a kick in the ankle or, or you know, points north perhaps, but, uh, but they came back. Came back to nicely, won that game by five in regulation, I might add. Uh, they, they finally got a lead late in the second half and then were able to not walk away with it by any means, but five points still is five points. They won the game, which was probably perhaps a difference between getting a four seed or a five seed, depending upon how you look at it, too. Yeah, well, maybe not so much. Uh, they had had the seeding, uh, I believe, in advance, but certainly between feeling like a four seed and feeling like a five seed because when you when, when you are the four seed playing against five seed, you know that team is pretty evenly matched. Uh, so you could kind of end up feeling like you're an underdog, which isn't uh, necessarily a bad thing in any way. Uh, but I'd like to add uh, when he said about the same conference, not just same conference, two teams that were neck and neck throughout the whole season in the same conference. So there was actually a lot to play for for Rice Lake. And the defense we saw in the second half against Medford 
is the defense that we saw in the first half here against uh, against Rhinelander. And when you look at it, the teams have been very good against Rice Lake in the second half. Rice Lake has tended to kind of put defense on the shelf for the second half. Hopefully they don't do that tonight. Uh, but uh, they only allowed 21 points uh, from the Medford team in the second half playing the defense. And now here we are in the playoffs with Rhinelander having kind of that elevated motivation. And they've only scored three more points than Medford did in the second half uh, against uh, the, the stellar defense of Rice Lake. The Rice Lake defense kept Rhinelander in. Admittedly, Rhinelander, or, uh, Rice Lake and Hayward aren't exactly, uh, uh, well, they're comparable, of course. Yeah, well, they're, they're separated two. by 27 points. I think. Right, yes. but the Rice Lake defense kept Rhinelander 20 points less than, than what Hayward did. So let me uh, tell you real quick here, JT Schradel was a uh, first half leading scorer. He had 13, seven for Zach Orr, and then uh, Evan Strand had three. Connor Durand had two. Rice Lake, two out of four from the free throw line in that first half. Devin Feck led the scoring for the Hodags at eight. Uh, Truman Lamers had six, and then uh, Will Gretzinger had five. Three points for Seth Noffitz and two for James Heck. And that was the scoring there. Twenty, uh, three out of five for the uh, uh, Hodags from the free throw line in the uh, first half. So both teams, well, Rice Lake shot 50%. Rhinelander shot 60%, 25-24. And we're about ready to go for half number two here. What do you see in the second half? Uh, well, of course, uh, looking at the keys uh, for these two teams in the second half, where Rice Lake needs to take it, I think, a little easy on the, the sloppy fouls. They commit six fouls in the first half. And looking at those fouls, uh, there was maybe two, three fouls that I'd say were actually good good fouls uh, and that weren't uh, considerably sloppy. And so I think Rice Lake does need to kind of clean up the defense a little bit. The defense has been good, but just been finding the uh, kind of the, the the middle ground between being not aggressive enough and too aggressive, uh, trying to good, make sure you're guarding well, kind of in the lane. They left that open a few times, even if Rhinelander didn't punish them. Uh, switching quickly and jumping passes for Rhinelander, taking care of the ball, trying to make fake passes, fake shots. Uh, driving and then kicking out and uh, drawing offensive fouls against Rice Lake. Will Quinn throws it off the hand of Zach Orr, so the ball stays with Rhinelander to start the second half here. We're just 10 seconds into the second half. Rice Lake leading by one, and Heck has it. Now on the pass back to the outside, and here's a shot. Will Johnson with the block, and Rice Lake cleans up the board. Nice, uh, just with the scoring summary, Devin uh, Feck, he's averaging 9.4 points per game, so not the leading scorer. But he's shooting 52.3% from the field. Uh, he's getting enough uh, shots up today to be able to really make that uh, make that come into play a lot. Also shooting 51% uh, from behind the arc, by the way. Connor Durand out on this near sideline. Referee's not counting. And he will go over to Schradel and now to Strand in the corner. schradel has got it back. Starting five on the floor for both sides. Outside again for Strand. Boy, thought about the three. Oh, boy, what a whip pass inside to find Tradle. And he scores to give the Warriors a three-point lead. And I was being uh, being careful not to uh, not to activate uh, the announcer's jinx there, but I was going to say Rice Lake needs to do kind of like a give and go in the post. Uh, so just in the paint in general, because Rhinelander's leaving it actually pretty open, surprisingly, for a playoff game. 27-24, three-point difference for the Warriors. Minute and a half gone in the second half. And this is a great switching, smart defense, uh, aggressive defense uh, for Rice Lake here out of the gate. Gretzinger with it. I know, I know a lot of people might not see it because it's not going to be on the highlight wheel, but that was a beautiful switch from Will Johnson and Zach Wood to kind of cover up the man down low. A challenge shot won by the Warriors, and finally Connor Duran comes away with the loose ball. Coming up on two minutes gone by, second half. Warriors leading 27-24. Duran, another zip pass in. Will Johnson got behind the defense. He gets his first basket of the night, and the Warrior lead out to five, 29-24. 
That's poked away by Duran. Easy save on the sideline, and then he gets stripped right away too by Gretzinger. And then another strip on the other end by Heck, and now the short uh, memory's got to go back and forth to both of these teams. Here's a drive to the block, or hook shot, short. Rebound comes down to Gretzinger. This is kind of what I miss a little bit about March Madness. I mean, they have kind of that up-tempo play, but watching some of these turnovers, uh, especially when you, when you know some of these kids, and uh, watching kind of, uh, of course, the playoffs, uh, how big of a deal that is, but some of these steals, too, and that kind of that fast turnover play. Noffitz airmailed it, and then he throws it into the backcourt, so the Warriors just let it go. They gain as much ground as they can, and Connor Durand will do the inbounding duties with exactly 15 minutes left here in the opening half, and that's gonna be an errant pass and an easy steal, and up for Will Quinn, who's got his first basket tonight, and it's now 29-26, and that was the easiest two points you'll ever find. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I was hoping, I, I got my hopes up for, for a mere second that Russ likes missed a lot of layups on that hoop, so I was hoping it was kind of the hoop. Uh, and not, not team, but he did indeed make that. Tradle out to Johnson. Durand. Beautiful back cut by Will Johnson. Yeah, that's good. That, you're going to get the ball a lot if you make that play. They're going to wave the shot off. Boy, that's always been a physical matchup between Johnson and 33 for Rhinelander Heck. That's his first foul, by the way, James Heck. And it's going to be Rice Lake ball with Schradel to inbound and 14.31 to go. Comes into Orr, spot three. Yes, sir. Great, uh, great screens to uh, to set up that uh, that pass in and uh, and the shot for Zach with the open shot. It helps extend the lead, double the lead for Rice Lake actually. Gretzinger in the front court on the left wing, and he'll take a spot three and bury it. Second three-pointer for him tonight. Averages 16 and a half. He's halfway to that number. He's got eight, and it's 32 to 29 with four minutes gone. He's shooting about 38% from behind the three-pointer. Will Johnson, and now Durand at the top of the arc. Schradel. Johnson, and Strand. Schradel has it, he'll go to the lane, through a double team, and it falls through. 17 for him. Five points is the lead for the Warriors, 34 to 29. And this is something you want to happen, if it's going to happen at all in the playoffs, you want to see it happen in the first half, so it, it the hurts left paint collapsing for oh. Oh. oh, Boy, two Rice Lake players came flying through the screen. James Heck just was patient about it. And it's back down to a three-point difference. Connor Durand has it, spins his way down the right side of the lane, missed the little bunny layup. And he's frustrated with himself. Now watch him because sometimes he lets his emotions get away from him a little bit. Yeah, I think that actually uh, helped to Ice Lake more for Rhineland to kind of dribble it up around that volleyball line. Uh, it gave them kind of a, a chance to kind of let their emotions soothe a little bit after that uh, after that play. Lamers thought about the three, pulled it back. Gretzinger has it over on the far sideline. He's going to take a six-foot deep three-point shot, and it goes out of bounds to the Rhinelander fans, but they can't play. Well, maybe they can, but not in this particular game. Hostrider and Eggleston check back in for the Warriors. Schradel with a little... Kitchen is giddy up as he's going to go over and talk to the, well, actually he's going to go, I thought he was going to go outside, but I came back in. Just needed a breath of cooler air, apparently. 12.21 to go, second half. Warriors lead by three over Rhinelander. And uh, certainly if you're Rice Lake, you're hoping JT Schrader uh, is able to get back in quickly because the Rhinelander paint has just completely collapsed here in the second half. There's a quick running layup for Zach Orr. He's got five and a half, 12 in the game. And the lead back to five for Rice Lake, 36-31, 12 minutes to play. And yeah, there's no colloquial way to, to put it. Uh, the uh, defense in the paint for Islander is just completely collapsing so far. Jump stop, Gretzinger missed. Rebound loose, Will Johnson yanks it down. Now Zach Orr has it. And Rice Lake in the second half contesting every shot through the first six Whoop. and a half minutes. 
Zach got his pocket picked. It's a two on one back the other way. Johnson and Eggleston come back defensively and they drop Truman Lamers to his backside. Colton Eggleston will be charged with the foul, his first. And Truman Lamers on the free throw line, one for two from the line tonight, six points, 59% free throw shooter. And, uh, and back to the discussion about, uh, about cutting down on the sloppy fouls. Uh, with six and a half minutes in, that was the first foul. I still don't think they have a sloppy foul so far in this half. That was a good one, he had the breakaway. Uh, make him uh, make him earn those points uh, from the stripe. He's been shooting under 60%. I mean, a sigh of relief breathed by some Rice Lake fans as JT Schradel returns to the lineup. 36-32 after the made free throw. And the second one is too strong. The rebound to Schradel right on cue. 11 and a half to go, second half. Warrior lead is four. First half was a Rhinelander lead for most of the half. Nice backdoor pass to Will Swenson. And we've got a 30 second timeout called by Rice Lake. I hate to say it, but I don't like, the, I don't like that call by Kevin Oy to use the timeout. I know he uses his timeouts uh, fairly frequently. Uh, it, it's not so much about the concept of burning a timeout. It is, Rice Lake has the momentum. Uh, I was about to say after uh, Svensson kind of tapped uh, that one in there. Uh, it is unbelievable in the second half so far how easy it's been for Rice Lake. They make one back cut, uh, they, they set one screen, uh, they have, have someone cut actually up from the block, and they have the person with the ball penetrate, uh, whether it's uh, Zach or whoever it is, drive towards the block, and Ryan is just getting out of the way. And We'll have to see if Rice Lake actually gets more momentum on their side now, uh, or if this actually ends up helping Rhinelander. I'm stunned by this push-up display over on the far side. Six-point lead, and now Will Quinn into the front court, bounce pass across, that's into the shin of JT Schradel. JT coast to coast, puts it up and in. 19 for him. Rice Lake has their largest lead of the game now at eight, 40 to 32, and there's a steal by Eggleston. And, and the, the pass goes to Strand, and he wasn't ready for it as it fumbles out of bounds. And if the post problems, uh, both actually in the transition, uh, as we've seen, and in the half court set aren't enough for Rhinelander, the pass is, uh, is something I highlighted at halftime, uh, killing them at the very least, they need to, to begin kind of uh, making kind of a fake pass. Over and back call as uh, Devin Feck got into the front court. The, the rule is all three points, both feet and the ball have to go into the front court. Then if you step on the half court line or in the back court, that's a violation and that's what happened there. I'm using my referee days. Will Swenson and now Orr. Free throw line, down the lane, off the glass. No, rebound comes down to James Heck and he looked like he was getting ready to have a fist fight with his own teammate, ripping that ball around. Gretzinger into the front court. Quinn with it now. Eggleston challenges him. Quinn lost a handle on it. That'll be a reach-in foul. I think referees will talk things over and determine who the guilty party is. And it's going to be Schradel. That's his second. I mean, we've seen uh, Schradel. We've seen Orr a few times in somewhat foul trouble. Uh, but, I mean, so for, for this game, uh, I mean, you have two for Stradle, two for Wood. That's really not bad. Eight minutes here in the second half. Heck gets the inbounds. He's wrestling with Orr. Now Gretzinger and Feck. Little over the shoulder pass back to the outside. Work along the sidelines down to the corner. Come back to this side now for Quinn. You can tell Rice like starting to play a little bit more conservative defense uh, here with the lead. Just trying to make sure that they don't really get burned, but they're able to contest. Three for Feck is no good, and the rebound comes down to Colton Eggleston. On that last, I'll talk about it here when they get back down to the other end, but Orr's got it at the block. Whip pass over to the other side. Swenson saves it from tumbling out of bounds, and it's out of bounds this time. Last touch by Feck. <laughs> and Evan Strand goes landing into the first row of Rice Lake students. 
anyway, what I was going to say about the Rice Lake defense, they've, they've drifted back down toward the baseline. They've been playing so aggressively up almost to, to the free throw line. On that last defensive set, they were drifting back down toward the baseline more where they belong or where you would think they'd belong. And uh, at least as of now, I mean, they can afford to do that because they played so diligent, aggressive defense in the first half. Uh, that's given them a little bit of a lead here. Gretzinger with the steal. Feck has it over on the far side wing. Trying to get around Strand, got some space, and buries the jumper. Devin Feck gets into the double digits now. He's got 10, the lead down to six for Rice Lake with 9-10 to go. Zach Orr tiptoes across the timeline. Johnson and Orr and Connor Duran. Backside, JT Schradel waits and scores again. Give him 21 tonight, Daniel. 42 to 34, back out to an eight point lead again. Yeah, I mean that uh, that 28 uh, high score might be a little bit in danger, but again, I mean anybody, anybody, well, I don't want to say anybody, but a lot of players can put up 20 points the regular season, but who shows up when it matters in the postseason at home? James Heck doing his level best, trying to keep that ball from going out of bounds. Couldn't save it. Ball goes out, belongs to Rice Lake with an eight point lead and eight and a half minutes to play in the second half. Zach Orr crosses the timeline. Finds Connor Durand and now JT Schradel. Orr out near half court. Zip pass over here to Will Johnson. And now we've got an offensive foul called. Looked like on a moving screen. Yep, offensive foul, so that goes against Orr. That's his, whoops, just broke my pencil. Third, <laughs> third, <laughs> third team foul, uh, third personal and, well, yeah, third personal and third team foul. It's not ideal for Rice Lake for Orr to have three fouls now. I mean, there is eight minutes left. But I mean, it, it could be worse. I mean, they have they have they have a little bit of a lead, uh, and certainly they're keeping them out there. I don't think that's really a problem at this point. Gretzinger, the left-hander, too strong, and the weak side rebound comes down to Connor Durand. Durand one on four, out to Schradel on the wing. He'll drive, spins his way through traffic. Strand winds up for three and hits it. Second three-pointer, all six of Evans' points tonight have come by way of the three, and Rice Lake now has a nine, a make it an 11-point difference. And the Strand usually shooting about 35% uh, from the three-point line, but he's making a one to matter tonight. Gretzinger to answer that short. Rebound crashed nicely. Back to the outside, another three-point attempt. That's off the mark, and we've got a huge foul at the free-throw line. Truman Lamers went flying out of the hands of Will Johnson. And before we get any further, we've got a timeout on the floor. It's going to be a full timeout with 7.09 to go. Rice Lake 45 and Rhinelander 34. I was going to say with that last foul, I mean, the Rhinelander studio can have their fun, but they're never in a million years going to call that a technical. I mean, that was, that was a, uh, just just a good basketball play. I mean, he was, he was rushing in there on, uh, on the rebound. So I'm watching the, yeah, I'm watching it there. Uh, you could see it. You leave Will Johnson. Will Johnson was trying to get on uh, Feck, but he ended up uh, in a little bit of chaos there and uh, ended up with, uh, with again, what was a hurried foul, but was not a deliberate hurried foul, which is why it, it's not going to be a flag. But, Lamers was trying to cruise down the lane to go for the uh, go for the rebound, and Will just came up, kind of again not intentionally, but gave him a forearm yeah, shiver was, in, the, in the arm and just kind yeah, of sent him flying. He was, he was just trying to trying to get in there against Feck, and there was I mean there was a lot of there's a lot of chaos when you when you actually have a legitimate chance at an offensive rebound. Uh, but I do think again with the momentum, I think Rhinelander had some good momentum. I think they had some bad momentum. They were playing a little bit sloppy on offense. Uh, they were getting more, they were out rebounding Rice Lake. So hopefully that's something uh, we talked about that, uh, that Rice Lake can, uh, can bury this uh, scourge here in the second half. Rice Lake has outscored Rhinelander 20 to 10 here in the second half. That ball tipped into the lane. Now to this side, Lamers has it out to the top. 
And with, uh, with that play in the lane, I think earlier if it had been a little bit closer, we probably might have saw Will Johnson try and, uh, try and poke that one away, reach kind of around him uh, trying to avoid a foul, but that time, again, you could see 11 point lead, he got just under seven minutes, playing a little more conservative, that's a moving screen. That's a moving screen. That is gonna be a two-handed push by Evan Strand is what that's gonna be. Yep, so Strand with the foul, that's his second. Zach Orr comes in, out goes Sam Jevney. 6.44 to play in the second half. Rice Lake's lead is 11 at 45 to 34. And by the way, with, uh, with 10 minutes exactly now in the second half, Wassa East's lead is only two against Merrill in what is going, we're going to likely have two Bayern burners in these two games to determine who plays in the next round. Devin Feck here on the near side wing, now top of the arc. Goes to the wing on the other side for Quinn. Lamers has it. Gretzinger got a switch underneath. Jumper no good, rebound Schradle. That's one, you know, we talked about it ad nauseum tonight in the last couple of games. Rice Lake missing those little bunny shots and now it's killing Rhinelander here tonight. I mean, on a few of those, I do think they're trying a little bit too much to draw contact instead of taking a good shot. But I mean, I mean some of them have been good shots that haven't fell yet. Truman Lamers picks up the foul there. That's his third. And the second team foul against Rhinelander. 6.04 to go. I mean, some of the Rhinelander students uh, thought that might have been a charge, but just pointing out, I mean, again, with kind of that uh, no moving screen, it, it does look like, I mean, if you're going to play a more physical game, you also let the offense play a little more physical game. So again, watching that play, I mean, you can kind of live with, uh, with that uh, no call on the moving screen. Gretzinger for three, and that's good. His third of the night, 11 points in the game for him, and it's now an eight point difference as Rhinelander cuts the lead to 45 to 37 as we come up on five and a half minutes to go. Schradle, free throw line, boy, wide open right down the heart of it, looks for a foul, gets none, and now Rhinelander looking to run. Devin Feck has it out on the wing, top of the arc. Boy, thought about, did you see that? thought about pulling the trigger on a three-pointer from the volleyball line? Yeah, I mean, here in the Ola, that's reserved uh, for Zach Orr, but... <laughs> How about a little underhanded scoop shot? That's no good. That's going to draw the ire of his coach. That's a resource basketball move. That is really not something we expect to see a whole lot of here in the, in the playoffs. 30-second timeout taken by Rice Lake. They will have two left, 45-37. We are at exactly five minutes to go in the second half. Rice Lake in front by eight. I mean, that's a that's a good time out by Oyo. Your team's been playing a little bit sloppy. Uh, they've probably been frustrated with, with a couple of uh, what they perceive as uh, missed calls. So I mean, just kind of calling that time out, allowing them to, to regroup, to kind of, uh, to kind of re get their bearings again. By the way, uh, Merrill and Wasa East, it is a, a five point lead by Wasa East. Uh, it will not get any closer right now for Merrill though as they just turn it over uh, under their, their basket. Uh, but then again, uh, it's it's still anybody's game in that match uh, with time? Eight, eight and a half minutes left uh, and really more or less, uh, it's anybody's, uh, anybody's game here. So five minutes to play in the second half here. Rice Lake in front by eight. Most of the first half, Rhinelander had led. Rice Lake did lead by one at the half, 25 to 24. And Evan Strand has it in the backcourt. Little shake and bake, gets into the front court and gets the ball back from Schradle and now Will Johnson through a double team. It was a quick back cut, it was just not even a second where Evan Strand was completely open directly under the hoop. And I mean, you can live with uh -oh. them missing that. Not well, gonna miss that one though. We certainly hope not. Back to a 10 point advantage as Will Johnson scores. He's got four tonight and it's 47-37 with just under four and a half to play. And it's not, I mean, it's not desperation time yet uh, for Rhinelander, but I do think for, certainly for Morales, it's very important they score this possession. How about a three? Devin Feck for three, he's got 13 tonight. And the lead down to seven, 47 to 40. Or to Schradle in the backcourt. And now a half court trap. Schradle, I beg your pardon, Orr with a head of steam. 
He's fouled by Will Gretzinger. That'll be number one on him. And the one positive if you're Rhinelander is you have you have plenty of fouls to give, which actually might actually be a negative at this point because it's gonna take longer for them to actually be able to start shooting the free throws. I'm not saying completely right now that you start doing these really sloppy fouls just so you don't have so you can make them have to get to the line sooner. Uh, but certainly uh, making sure that you don't have four fouls with 30 seconds uh, left and have to foul them three times and burn a bunch of time off clock. There's one of those potentially sloppy fouls as that foul comes 30 feet away from the basket, maybe more. Will Quinn, the guilty party that time, that's his first. Fourth team foul, so Rhinelander still has two more to give before they get into the bonus situation. Will Johnson has it here as we come up. We're down to 3.41 to play. Or near half court, he's met there. Now Durand, Johnson all by himself. Well, he, get, he got hammered twice. Oh, oh you, no, 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 no. Pushing and shoving as well. No, team him up, team him up. He shoved him, he shoved him. Foul on 33, James Heck, that's his second. I cannot believe. <laughs> Coach Orr letting the near side official get an earful as well. You know, that's one of those I guess you just have, have your fun with a little bit there. Uh, it was a little, he got the warning there. Yeah, I mean. It was, it was a little sketchy after the play. Of course, uh, you know, you just got to have your fun with that sometimes. And that's the best that's, way that's to the fun. That. That's the fun you have with it. Zach Orr for three. Back out to a 10-point difference with 3.20 to go. Inside, fact, no good. Schradel has a rebound, and then he gets his arm yanked. Foul on two, Devin Feck, his second. That's the sixth team foul. So now with 3.16 to go in the ball game, Rice Lake will be shooting bonus free throws the rest of the way. On the inbound, everybody's standing by, and the shot is blocked from behind. Down goes Gretzinger oh, no. and Connor Durand with the foul. And now Durand and Devin Feck having, having words. Rhinelander students giving the Rice Lake players a, uh, an earful as well. Gretzinger's free throw is no good. Perhaps, perhaps a little poetic justice there. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind a game that gets a little bit rowdy towards the stretch, but even I'm a little bit afraid that this might get out of hand pretty quickly uh, if it continues on this pace. Second free throw is good. So that gives Gretzinger 12 tonight. And now we've got a foul in the backcourt on Gretzinger. That'll be his second. And that will put Connor Durand on the free throw. Uh, yes, Connor Durand on the free throw line for a one and one. 37% free throw shooter on the season has just the two points as he shot, uh, he got a basket in the first half and that's all he's mustered so far tonight. The free throw, uh, got the friendly bounce in his home gym. That's the first free throw that Rice Lake has shot here in the second half. They went two for four in the first half. And it's a make for Duran who shoots 37% uh, on the season. Second one, no good. Devin Feck has the rebound. Clock runs with 3.05 to go. Near side, Gretzinger winds up for three. Back iron, no good. Rebound, Heck has it. And he gets the ball slapped out of his hands right to Gretzinger, though, as he splits a double team and scores. Under three to play. Eight-point Rice Lake lead. Schradel almost threw it away, and he'll get it back in the backcourt. Now we've got a timeout called by Rice Lake. They're down to one. And another uh, score update, as it looks like it might be a little bit getting away from Rhinelander. Uh, Merrill really going to have to have to make a push uh, quickly as Wassa East up by nine, 429 in the second, uh, and Wassa East is, uh, is shooting at least one free throw right now. 
2.45 to play here. 51 to 43, our score. <laughs> this is going to be a vocal battle between these two student sections across the way. I tell you what, Rhinelander travels well. They've got a, a good student group over across the way, and their, their adult section over here down to our right is uh, filled to the brim as well. And also, I guess, with this rivalry that's uh, developed really quickly between Rhinelander and Rice Lake, the one good thing about, uh, one, of, one of the many good things, actually, about uh, interscholastic sports is you understand a week from now, neither of these teams are going to care much about any of this. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the good thing about uh, still being at least kind of young, for these guys being able to, to forget and move on, I guess. Man. So, Warrior ball, 2.45 to play in the second half, and a Warrior lead of eight. Connor Duran to inbounds, got to get it in. Finally hands it off to JT Schradel. He had it knocked away for a moment. Now through a double team, they'll get it to Zach Orr. Or Schradel to the lane, finds Johnson. Rice Lake very content to play keep away for the time being. Or will not be able to save it. Out to Gretzinger at the top of the arc and the traveling call. Turnover by the Hodags. And that draws the oohs and the ahs and the ohs from the Rhinelander faithful. Yeah, he. Uh, he did, for as good of a player as Gretzinger is, he did, uh, did end up taking those steps, trying to make a pivot there. And, yeah. and there's a travel yeah, on the yeah, other yeah. end. Straight up, straight up. Rice Lake with one timeout left. Rhinelander with two. 2.16 to play in an eight point difference. Rice Lake in front. They've led the entire second half, and they've been up as, by as many as 13. I mean, you can. By eight. You can understand a little bit of frustration uh, from Schradel, but he did, uh, he, you could tell he was moving. It didn't look like he was walking without There's dribbling. A steal by Connor Durand, and the left hand layup is good. Back to a 10 point difference with two minutes left. Stop, Feck has it straight away, top of the arc for three, no good. Rebound, Durand had it for a moment, Strand pulls it down, and now Schradel with it. Backcourt, foul there. Will Gretzinger with the foul, his third. And that's going to send Evan Strand to the free throw line tonight uh, for the second time tonight. 0 for 2, missed both of his free throws in the first half. He has six points. And that one no good. Ryan Lander has the board. I think it's more appropriate to point it out now, but uh, it looks like the game plan for Ryan Lander is to foul down stretch. This rice like team that shoots about 61.5% uh, from the line. Easy basket for Will Gretzinger as he was able to shake his defense. Timeout taken by Rhinelander. One timeout apiece. Gretzinger now with two, four, five, 11 and a half, 16 for the game. So he's right on his season average of 16 and a half points. Rice Lake's lead is eight with 98 seconds to go. Speaking of uh, playoff lead, it's not quite accurate to say Merrill is, uh, is dead to rights right now, but they're in a tough situation coming out of a timeout with three minutes in the second. It's 54-41 uh, for Wasa East. They're in a good situation uh, to close this out, uh, so more than likely the winner of this game uh, will be playing uh, in Wasa East. And uh, for speaking on behalf of... Uh, of a great majority of the fans here. Hopefully uh, the team that will be playing in Wassa tomorrow will be Rice Lake. Well, if you can get through 98 seconds yet and hold on to an eight point difference, that's exactly what will happen. It's the, it's the free throws though that, uh, that you, gotta, you gotta be concerned about. I mean, it's not, it doesn't hurt as bad for Rhineland to follow as much as they do sometimes. How about a long baseball pass? The receiver, Zach Orr, able to touch it away. Schradel down to the corner and now it's outside for Strand, he gets a two-hand push, no call, they're trying to foul our Rhinelander, and now finally Evan gets uh, fouled with 1.23 to go. I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, 
I'll say, I mean, I, I do it quite a bit uh, when I play like basketball video games and stuff, but like kind of just, just passing to make sure you don't get fouled. I mean, again, if you guys like, you understand that you're not, you're not a terrific foul shooting team, but you have a higher percentage shooting from the line than throwing long dirt passes for no reason other than to try and burn time off. Strand makes his first free throw of the night. He's now one for four. And that gives the Warriors a nine point lead with a minute and 23 to go. And uh, Evan Strand, about more or less the median of this team for free throw shooting, 61.3%. Second one's gonna be short, rolls around and falls through. Back out to a 10 point lead. Gretzinger on the far side wing, pull back three. It looked like it got partially deflected, it saved. Out here to this near side, now a two on one. Nice pass across oh. to Duran, the layup is gonna be too strong. Back come the Hodags as we hit a minute to go. Near side wing, three on its way, short. Rebound, Schradle. Schradle gets around traffic. And now finally a foul as he gets to the half court line with 55.9 left, 56 seconds or so. 23 is uh, Schroeder, that'll be his first. JT Schradel on the line, 21 points, 13 in the first half, eight here in the second. Two for two from the free throw line, and that's the 10th team foul, so that puts the Warriors on the line for two free throws the rest of the way. And he rattles the first one home. Back to an 11 point difference. Will Johnson, Connor Duran come out to a standing ovation from the Warrior fans. Second free throw is no good. Rebound will be tracked down by Lamers. Devin Feck with it, trips, down he goes and just shuffles the ball out of bounds. And you do have to admit that uh, Ryan Lander they put up a, a real fight here tonight in Rice Lake. You could tell that uh, they wanted to win this game. They wanted to go against Wasa East, but uh, but in the end, I mean, Rice Lake, uh, they they executed a little bit better a few more times. They uh, they played a little more aggressive and cleaner on defense. Oh, he missed the, missed the jam, and that's gonna bring the ire of the uh, Rice Lake fans. Oh boy, you're okay. So, all right, look. You're down by 11. You're gonna try a hot dog move. The last possible thing that you could ever want to have happen is what we just saw. Oh my, especially in the opposing gym. Yeah, and I mean, uh, wow. It, it took a lot of effort for me not to let uh, my fan instincts get the best of me. I've seen that, I've seen that a few times where they've missed dunks late in games and I guess it just, it adds a little bit to the sweetness of of being able to move on, uh, in Rice Lake's case, go on and play Wassa, Wassa East next. Uh, actually tomorrow, yeah. Pierce Hostrider shot two free throws, missed them both. Lead stays at 11 with under 30 seconds to play now. Near side, Quinn, he'll take his three and that's blocked by Schradel. Nice pass underneath, comes back outside to this side. That's an air ball on the weak side. Strand gets hacked by James Hack. And then he's got something to say to somebody. James Heck with the foul, that's his third. And in his defense, he did, I think he was barking at um, Evan Strand, and he did go up, put a hand on his shoulder, and probably uh, said sorry about if that was a more tough hit than he had, anti had intended. Yeah, and I mean, I think even when you, uh, even when you play, play teams that maybe aren't made of uh, your closest friends, such as when I was playing City League, but I mean, you know, you know, you're gonna probably not win at this point, and just you, you know that, you know, it's uh, I don't know, it's the right thing to do. It's a, it's a good sportsman thing to do, uh, and I fully applaud him for that. Both free throws missed for Strand. We have 15 seconds to go. Rhinelander has cleared the bench. Three point shot, no good. They're gonna let Rice Lake. They're not gonna foul anymore as we go under 10 seconds. Strand gets into the front court and the ball bounds around. 
A foul called as time expires. Lamers will have a chance. Well, let's see, what are they gonna do here? Teams are lining up to shake hands. I think that foul came before the clock expired. The question is whether they're gonna have them shoot it because it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And so they will not make the free throws be attempted. Sam Jevney was the uh, person who got charged with the foul. And so with that, the final score, Rice Lake 57 and Rhinelander 45. And after a very chippy game, uh, got some, had some pushing and shoving. It's great to see these guys as they go through the handshake line. Nothing uh, sideways happened. And so it's a, uh, a great show of sportsmanship really on both sides uh, as that could have been a little difficult uh, toward the tail end of that ball game. And I mean, certainly uh, as a fan, maybe a little bit more uh, because the Warriors won, but as a fan, you you have respect for that. You know that uh, that both teams, they go out there, uh, they play their hearts out, they leave nothing left in the tank, uh, and being able uh, to have uh, to have that congratulating uh, for both teams and saying good job because uh, both teams uh, play, played a very, very good, very hard fought uh, game tonight, but in the end, Rice Lake lives to, uh, to fight another day, and the second half, I just want to talk about in the second half what, uh, what really worked for Rice Lake, of course, uh, a man who more than likely played his, uh, his last game as a warrior in this gym, JT Schradle, absolutely having an excellent second half, getting into post scoring. Rice Lake knew that the defense was collapsing, through Ryan Lander in the post, they were making those back cuts. They were scoring on those back cuts. Uh, I'm sure they had uh, they had an astronomical amount of points in the paint. Uh, playing aggressive defense, uh, they forced uh, Ryan Lander to play up to their level, and uh, the rebounding uh, it got a little bit not quite as good down the final last uh, nine eight minutes or so for Rice Lake. But I mean. At the end of the day, they, uh, I mean, they, they gave the effort and they will come out of here with the win. And Rhinelander, I mean, played up tempo. They didn't, they didn't give up uh, at all as, as we saw. I mean, some fans might not like it where you're swatting at the ball when the other team is dribbling out, but Rhinelander, uh, they had a lot to play for and uh, they ought to have a lot of pride uh, in, in how they were able to play this game and uh, how, th they ought to be able to have a lot of pride in how their, their season went and how it ended. Well, you can't you can't fault Rhinelander at all because they uh, co-champions of the Great Northern Conference come in here. and they, I mean, there's no two ways about it. This is a tough place to play. And we mentioned it at the beginning of the game. There were a lot more Rhinelander fans here than there were Rice Lake fans, but they tend to come in a little bit later. And uh, I don't know as if that really made a whole lot of difference. Rice Lake had 25 in the first half. They score 32 in the second half, and uh, Rhinelander 24 in the first half and only 21 in the second half. So uh, their defense held up in that second half, and we'll let you get a chance here to give it some final words. I'll give the scoring summary here in a minute. We'll also get a scoring uh, recap or a scoring uh, report from the Wausau East and Merrill game here in a minute as well. And uh, speaking of a, of a team who can't fault, there's 11 uh, seconds left in that game. Uh, the Warriors will indeed be playing in Wasa East tomorrow. 59-50 lead for Wasa East. They're, they're currently shooting uh, two free throws. And uh, of course, if you're a male uh, for a team that didn't win a game in conference, uh, to be able to, to fight that closely with a very good Wasa East team, I mean, it's pretty impressive. But again, for the points I've made for guys like as I said earlier, don't think about the next game. There's no guarantee of the next game. Well, at this point, Rice Lake has a guarantee of the next game. So the question is, how do they attack Wasa East? Uh, the question, I think, is do you attack them like you attack New Richmond, like you attack River Falls? Well, they beat River Falls at home. They lost uh, by two uh, to New Richmond on the road. If we see a Rice Lake team play tomorrow like uh, we see played tonight, uh, I think they're definitely in a very good situation uh, to be able to keep this playoff run and running. 
Scoring summary for tonight, Connor Durand had five points, nine for Evan Strand, 15 for Zach Orr, two points for Will Swenson, uh, four for Will Johnson, and the game's leading scorer was JT Schradel. He had 21. Bryce Lake uh, shot seven of 15 from the free throw line tonight. For Rhinelander, two points for Will Quinn, three for Seth Noffitz, 13 for Devin Feck, seven for Truman Lamers, 16 to lead the uh, Hodags for Will Gretzinger, and four points for James Heck. Five of nine from the free throw line were the Hodags tonight, and again, Rice Lake, 25 to 24 in the first half, and then 32 to 21 in the second half to win this one, going away by a final margin of 57 to 45. Rice Lake now improves to 15 and 10 overall, and uh, they'll be taking on Wausau East in the uh, playoffs in the regional final tomorrow in Wausau. And Rhinelander, uh, they finish the season at 16 and 10, and uh, so that will uh, that will be where they finish up. And uh, they, of course, finish up as uh, co-champions of the Great Northern Conference. Any uh, any last parting shots? I mean, I guess because this is the postseason. I mean, I think. I think what we saw today uh, explains it all. Rice Lake, uh, they struggled in the second half of the season. Uh, they started out very, very good at 7-2, and two, and after that, uh, it was kind of an uphill struggle. But tonight, when it mattered, they pulled off the win, and certainly you've got to be feeling pretty good uh, going up against uh, against Wasa Eastamore. And, I mean, it's... It's kind of like March Madness. They think it happened to them all. We can have all our analytics uh, set out, but uh, again, it, it ends up being who goes out there, who plays harder, uh, who executes better, and that's, uh, that's what we saw tonight. That's what we'll see tomorrow. Very good. Daniel, thank you very much. As always, uh, good to work with you this season, and uh, hopefully you get a chance to do it again in the future. Thank you. Very good. That's Daniel Broker. Many thanks to our crew, Evo and uh, Amir, for helping us out all season, as always. Also, uh, I suppose it would be uh, good to thank Micah, who was uh, helping us uh, in our game uh, last week. And so we wish the seniors very well, unless uh, we are somehow magically able to see them again one more time here at Olsen Gymnasium. But otherwise, we will see you for some spring sports this spring. And uh, thank you very much to our crew. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Rice Lake High School, of course, for hosting. And uh, that's going to do it for us. 57 to 40, what was it? 57 to 40. <laughs> 45, I believe. 45, that's it. It's there. Now he got back in my book. I closed my book already. 57-45, our final score here tonight. Thanks for being with us. This has been a presentation of Rice Lake Community Media in association with Rice Lake, Rice Lake High School and the WIAA. For more, go to our website, ricelaketv.com. And we will see you down the road for more sports and other events. Keep tuned to Rice Lake Community Media for all the best in local television. See you down the road. James Weingard with Daniel Broker and our crew and everybody here at Rice Lake. Thanks for watching. Good night and all the best.